let's talk about selecting refrigerants. Well, this all makes sense. You select the refrigerant based on how well it performs. Does it give you a good COP for those temperatures that you want with reasonable pressures? You don't want astronomically high pressures in the evaporator or the condenser because if somebody punctures it, you don't want it to act like a bomb, right? And things do have leaks in them. And the higher pressure it is, the more difficult it is. Safety, some refrigerants are flammable. So if you have a leak, it could, with any spark around it, could, boop. Some refrigerants are butane and propane, ammonia. Uh, and then also the environmental impact has come on strong since the 1970s. Does it go out and do bad things to the environment because these systems will leak the refrigerants? That they just will leak. Um, or maybe when it's decommissioned, they just psh, cut it open and let it all escape. So um, that's just a reality. Synthetic refrigerants, man-made refrigerants, were developed in the 1930s because of toxicity and flammability of most of refrigerants before that time. So if it leaked out, settled on the floor, worker bent down to pick up a tool, got a big whiff, maybe they fell on the floor and they died, or something like that, right? It's toxic, not healthy to be breathing, and it could be an asph asphyxian. Or maybe there was a spark, machinery running, boom, now you have a blow up. Okay, so in the 30s, they got a very um, great advantage of these synthetic. What were some of the most popular? R12. It was all over the place, still is. It's a chlorofluoral uh, carbon, CFC. Uh, it's now been outlawed because of environmental concerns. R22, hydrochlorofluoral carbon. So used to be if you had an air conditioning system in an automobile, it was all R12. That's probably now before you were born. Uh, but now they're all 134A. Why did they switch? Not because of toxicity, not because of flammability, but not because of safety, not because of performance, actually. It's environmental impact. And almost all your homes are R12, but now they are switching those over. If you get a brand new system in a home, it's probably 410A. It's probably this one right down here. So the, all of these were being used, but in the 70s, they found out about ozone, high level, up, way up high altitude. They were being gobbled up by this leaky uh, refrigerants that go up there and interact with the sun. So they started banning the production of certain chlorine, that's the bad actor, in these refrigerants. And then they had to develop new chlorine re free refrigerants. And so 134A is, seems to be the replacement for 12, and 410A seems to be the replacement for 22. So just take a look at what they look like. Um, you can tell this one, R22 has a cor carbon, a hydrogen, a chlorine, and two fluorines. And it looks like methane, so the C, the carbon, is surrounded by four things. One is a hydrogen, one big chlorine sitting out here, and then two fluorines. This is another illustration of 134A. So it has a carbon and a carbon, like two methanes combined and linked. And it has two hydrogens off of one of the carbons, that'd be the two hydrogens, and then a fluorine off, that's a green, and then off the other Car, uh, carbon, three fluorines, three greens. I'm not a chemist. So there are different makeups of these synthetic refrigerants. Uh, here is more on that phase out from the EPA. Went to the EPA website and took a look. And uh, as of January 1st, 2010, because of the Montreal Protocol, the US, blah, 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 as a result, HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems manufactured may not produce any new air conditioners or any new heat pumps that use R22. And you can see increased agreements that will be continuing to kick in. Chemical manufacturers no longer able to produce, so oh, that's what it is. You'll be able to use it if it's been reclaimed, but won't be able to produce any. Right now, the pound cost of refrigerant 22, it just continues to skyrocket. So what it used to be, it's probably at least a factor of four or five since 2010. Just so it's going to go out by economics. One other thing, other than the high level ozone depletion, and they characterized a lot of refrigerants. Here's all a lot of refrigerants. And they would look at the ozone depletion potential. And long bar to the left is bad. Short stubby or if no bar is great. True? 
for ozone depletion. But there's another thing, it's called global warming potential. How well does it act like a CO2 blanket in the atmosphere? Not damaging the ozone, but helping trap and have, they just call it climate change now, but global warming potential. And then, so for the same refrigerant, you can measure how bad it is for global warming potential. The larger the bar is to the right, in the blue color, the worse it is. And so what you want to pick are environmentally friendly refrigerants. R410A seems to be one that's popular, and R134A is very popular.